I'm gonna go ahead and cover this story. I actually just made a video on it, so I'm, I got it down. I don't need these notes. <laughs> Your notes are garbage. Oh, fine. You're too good. We'll scroll on to the next one. Go ahead. <laughs> so, a lot of you might have already heard about this. It's been getting a lot of attention, especially on socials. Subtle brag, but I've been doing PSAs about it on Twitter or through TechLore, and Firefox and Brave both engaged with it. And I thought it was a cool moment where, like, all these browsers that people pick wars over are all like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're all like, why, why the hell are we fighting? Like, this is great. Like, we, ha we all hate Chrome and we all deal with this issue. Anyway, Chrome is now warning and actually removing uBlock Origin from some people's browsers. This has been a slow rollout. It's been a long time coming, and this is due to Manifest V3. So extensions run on this technology called Manifest V2, and Chrome, you know, is trying to do better with privacy and security of extensions by pretty much restricting what extensions can do inside your web browser. I don't actually think it's the worst intention. The problem is I see this and kind of the analogy I made is to Apple. Apple is always doing this thing of like, we're going to try to raise the base standard of what safety can be to prevent people from abusing the system too much. So they have this super locked down ecosystem, but because it's so locked down, and this is something that Brave has said as well, this is how Brave put it with the, with Brave browser on iOS, they can't make it as good as they can in other platforms because WebKit is so restricted. So they've done what they can with WebKit and WebKit is actually better than a lot of browser engines by default compared to other browsers that you'll find on other operating systems. But you can't go better than that. And that's the issue. And this is, I think, the problem with Manifest V3. It might raise the bar for like malicious extensions and what they can do on your system. And it will probably protect some people. But why can people not use something better and make a better extension that can actually use those permissions for good. Um, so that's actually what's kind of going on here with uBlock Origin. They are unable to access as much data in your browser, uh, which means they can't offer you as good of a service and they can't block as much stuff. So that's what's going on. Your options are to use uBlock Origin Lite in Chrome if you're still stuck on Chrome for whatever reason. Um, it's still probably the best ad blocker you can use on Chrome. If you don't uh, want to use Chrome uh, or you just want to use uBlock Origin, which is what we probably recommend, uh, your options are you can use Brave with its default shields, uh, which is fine. Um, or Brave has actually integrated directly in the settings a way to install uBlock Origin. You go into your Brave settings, you go to extensions, you go to manage v2 extensions, and you click install uBlock Origin. You can also install uMatrix, you can install AdGuard, and I think uh, NoScript. Um, so they bake that in for you directly in the settings. Alternatively, you can use a Firefox-based browser. And that's probably like the easiest solution, I think, overall. Just use a Firefox-based browser, install uBlock Origin, and be done with your day. A lot of these Firefox-based browsers already include uBlock Origin, like Mulvad Browser and LibreWolf come with uBlock Origin out of the box. So those are kind of the solutions. Really tough situation. Not a big fan of it, obviously. Um, but hopefully that was all the context uh, that you need. I just wanted to add personally, and I, I don't think you'll disagree with me on this one. Uh, I wouldn't recommend U Matrix. Look, I love U Matrix. I loved it. It was so good. I loved it, but it hasn't been updated in like two or three years. Like the developer has put it in archive mode. It is officially unsupported. So you know, buyer beware on that one. But I was also going to say I've asked a I've asked a couple of loved ones recently if they'd be willing to try out Mulvad browser for a few weeks just to see how it performs for an average person. And so far, the only person, um, one person, this is on them, but apparently they have a Norton subscription. I think they might be watching now. Hi, love you. They have a Norton subscription and Norton flagged it as malicious. And I was like, well, Norton's malicious. Ignore it and uninstall Norton. But uh, once they got it installed, they, as far as I know, haven't reported any issues. The other person immediately was like, yeah, none of the streaming services work, like Netflix, Hulu. They actually went through and tested all of them that they had access to and none of them worked except Jellyfin. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily good for the average everyday user, but I do think it says a lot that the only complaint I've heard so far is like none of the streaming stuff works. So if you know somebody who doesn't stream in their browser anyways, Mulvad I think is a pretty good one too. But yeah, Firefox, LibreWolf, whatever. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think you are too, but I'm a huge proponent of using multiple browsers. So yeah. having Mulvad there for just like disposable searches or even mm -hmm. your default browser. And then when and you then need to watch Netflix, just open Brave or open even Firefox you can use Netflix with. Yep. Um, so there's just so many options that you have. And I don't know why people don't use multiple browsers, to be honest. Because even if I use Chrome, I, I want a different browser for different things. I just... I actually recommend that on the new oil in like the tips and tricks section of the browser section. It's like... 
whichever browser you go with, you should also download the other one as a backup browser because there's sometimes, you know, things just don't work in Firefox or they don't, even Brave. Weirdly enough, I have so many things that like don't work in Brave, but I open them in Mulvat of all things, they work fine. So yeah, yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> really weird. Yeah, it, it's, it's actually really interesting. Um, I think anyone who watched the video and like understands the point I was trying to make, which I made very obvious. I just made the video about like why I moved away from Firefox and how I'm using Mulvad and Brave as my workflow. I saw that one. Yeah. And there were a lot of people who were upset about that, even though I'm still using a Firefox based browser. They were like, I can't believe it's just cringe. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> it did what works for me. Anyway, I thought it was really funny because of all people, the Tor browser re retweeted it on Twitter and on Mastodon. <laughs> interesting. interesting. And I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, oh. Cool. I'm glad that the Tor, Pro Tor, Tor browser, Tor browser approves. And I'm and okay. <laughs> I, I literally wrote, wrote on my website on the browser, browser page at the top. I'm like, no matter which one I pick, somebody's gonna be like, well, why didn't you include this one? Or what about this one? I'm like, look, it, it's a sucky space. I hate Mozilla as a company. I hate Brave, Brave as a company. company. Uh, maybe not hate, but like they've done a lot of things I don't approve of. It's like there is no perfect solution, but. You just saw a clip from Surveillance Report Clips, which comes from our main podcast, Surveillance Reports, where we cover the weekly privacy and security news in a podcast in both video and audio format. So if you want to see more stories like this and stay updated to how to keep yourself safe, check out the main podcast here on the screen, and we'll see you over there or in the next clip.